Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, today is another installment in my Making the Most of Leftovers series, and we're going to be making burritos. Now, how you decide to make your burritos and what all you want to add up into it is entirely up to you, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm starting with some beans I cooked up the other night for Tar Hill beans and cornbread. And I like to always start with that because I can make up a big batch of beans. Sometimes we'll eat that dinner a couple nights in a row. And uh, <clears throat> it's a very simple flavorings that go into that. Basically just salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and some jalapenos. We keep it pretty simple. And um, then from there, it's easy enough to add whatever spices I want to change the flavor of it. So since I'm going to be making burritos, which is typically what I'll do with the leftover beans, is I'm going to be adding some more Mexican type spices. So again, amounts are going to vary according to your taste. I don't know how much is in here. I'm looking at probably about three cups of cooked beans in here so I'm going to put in I'm going to start with about oh two tablespoons of chili powder and oh, maybe up to a tablespoon of cumin like I like lots of this now this is one of those flavors that some people might want to go a lot lighter on and this chili powder, and I always link to these spices below, whatever it is I, I get on Amazon, because they get quite a bit of my spices in bulk on Amazon. I believe this is a blend, and it is a very mild blend. This isn't spicy. And besides, I already have dried jalapenos cooked into these beans, so it doesn't need to be super spicy. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of paprika, and... I'm trying to get better at cooking more with turmeric, so I try to only use it in things where the color isn't going to matter so much, because I really don't like the way turmeric turns everything gold. But the more I use it, the more I'm in love with it, because I do enjoy the flavor. Now, when I cooked up the beans yesterday, or not yesterday, it was actually the day before yesterday, I used a bunch of my mixed greens in that already. Um, so people have been asking me since they watched my you know, mixed greens video, and I'll post that right up here uh, t for me to do a video on all the different things I use it in. Well, I know, don't know that I'll do one separate video because I cook with these so much that anytime you see me making a dinner, most likely you're going to see me using these. Now, even though I already had these in here, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more tablespoons of these. So if you want to see what's in these, um, this is actually the blend from the year before, so some of this stuff in here is going to be a little bit different. But you can just go check out that video that I already pointed to. So now I'm just going to stir that in there. And there's already garlic and onions in here, so I probably won't be adding more of that. And then I'm going to put in about half this jar of my homemade salsa verde. And that was from the... Uh, tomatillos from my garden this year so that was pretty cool I got quite a bit of salsa and I'm still getting tomatillos even though it's November now so now that's what this looks like these beans have already been cooked for quite a long time I let them cook for two days now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna let that simmer for like another hour maybe two hours so I'm gonna go put this on my wood stove and then I'm gonna be back and show you a few more things and then I'll show you the next process of making the burritos. All right, so right here are the tortillas I made earlier in the day. And these are poppy seed, chia, and calendula flour um, tortillas. So uh, I do have a video already on how to make these. And I think I did that video last year. And you can find that right up here. And whatever ingredients you like to put in there, you don't have to add any of those extras in there at all. Um, it just so happens that I did these pretty similar to the year, the ones I did in that video up there because it was about the same time of year and I had a lot of calendula flowers. But I mix it up. I don't always put the same thing in. I've used dandelion flowers and stuff, and mostly it's just for the sake of getting a little more health benefits in that. And that one, and, and what I do find though when it comes to tortillas, um, to make them the best for being able to roll and stuff, 
using mostly a good unbleached organic white flour is going to work better for you than using 100% whole wheat flour. So just keep that in mind. For that one, I did two thirds white to one third of the home milled uh, wheat flour. And then um, before I go to the rest of the video on the burritos, I'll just show you. Here are my two. Whoops. Here are my two biggest spaghetti squash, and I'm really happy because I didn't expect to get ones this size for my own homegrown ones. Um, this one, this is about the size I figured I'd get. Now I didn't get a lot of spaghetti squash this year um, for several reasons, but I'm thinking next year is going to be a big year for us on spaghetti squash. Most of the ones I got were more this size, but the funny thing about this is this one spaghetti squash is enough for one dinner for both me and Mr. Rain. So um, what I plan on doing with this with these, and I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not, so that's why I'm talking about it here, is I plan on cooking these up and then freezing them into smaller batches so that it's not too much for us all at once. And then, real quick, over here, I've got some more eggs fermenting. This one, and this is thanks to a couple of my subscribers for giving me the idea of using jalapeno juice. Well, this liquid in here is from the, um, cayenne peppers that I recently fermented. And then I just went ahead, and since I'm not ready to make sauce out of the hot sauce out of those yet, I just went ahead and add a little bit more water, salt, and um, some fermentation starter into the cayenne peppers and stuck them back in the fridge just to make sure they stay nice and fermented. But this, the juice off of that is really spicy. So these are gonna be very, very spicy eggs. And then I threw in some garlic. And then the other idea people were giving me was to use um some beet juice. So this is some beet kvass. Um, it's, it, it's still really dark and I only put in like maybe that much. And then I, I still went ahead, even though it was from the beet kvass, I probably didn't need to add a fermentation starter like I probably didn't with this. I went ahead and did it anyway, just to be sure, and then topped it off with rainwater. So we'll see how these turn out. And by the way, these are the eggs, those of you who follow me on Facebook, that um, Miss Grumpy Pants, we found out she was laying, she laid a whole dozen dozen of them under our deck. And uh, I, at first I didn't think there was any way to get to them, but Mr. Rain, thankfully years ago when he built the deck, he used screws instead of nails. So all he had to do was unscrew a couple of boards, get the eggs out, and then put them back in there. And they were all good eggs. I tested them all, they were all good. So um, yeah. Figured I'd better cook them up right away though, so that's what I did. I boiled them and I'm fermenting them. Okay, and then one more thing, and I'm hoping to do a video on this, and I plan on doing it today, and that's why it's sitting out, but I don't think I'm gonna have time now, so I'll probably have to wait till tomorrow, is I'm gonna make a batch of soap, and this one is going to be calendula grapefruit. Grapefruit's really good for the skin, and um, bentonite clay. So I'll be doing, hopefully doing a video on that, so I'll be watching for that to come out later and anyway that's it for this and then I will come back when I'm ready for the next step on the burrito making. Alright so this is done. You see what that looks like. Now you have an option where you can take this and you can process it with a stick blender or whatever you want to do if you want it more like the refried beans where they're real smooth. Typically I just leave it like this because this, the beans are mostly really well cooked and I might smash it a little bit with a fork or whatever, but here's another thing I'm going to add is I have some, well, not that one, I have some leftover hamburger meat that I browned up the other night for another dinner. I don't remember which one that was. I can't believe I forgot already. And so I'm just going to add the rest of that in. So I'll get some more leftovers used up. And then whatever you, you know, if there's anything else you can think to add, any other vegetables or anything you want to add in here. Burritos is another one of those things, though. There is a traditional way of making burritos. It's still another one of those things where you can add and take away whatever you want to make it to suit you or, and or to use up leftovers out of the refrigerator um, to make the most out of them. And so now I'm going to take one of my... Oh, over one of my homemade tortillas here. Let's get a nice soft one. I always tend to get some a little too hard, but that's okay because those are the ones we like to snack on. And then I'm just going to put 
a little bit of the bean mixture on there. And I can see the difference in color by adding the turmeric. And I'm going to go ahead and spread it around because what, that, what that's going to do is going to help soften the or tortilla even more to make it easier to roll. And then what I have right here is some homemade goat cheese that I did the other day and I have a video on this. And it sh if it's out, because I don't always put my videos up in the same order, sometimes they can be a whole week ahead or behind the other one, but if it's out already, I'll go ahead and link it right up here. And I'm just gonna crumble that up and put that on top. Instead of using the typical cheddar like I normally would, like the organic valley cheddar. And I'm gonna let that kind of sit in there and soften a little bit. And then I'm gonna roll it up. Now what you'll find with homemade tortillas is that it's always a bit variable. Some roll real easy and some fall all to pieces. So I don't know what one what this is gonna do. I'm praying it's gonna turn out nice. So Again, the longer you let the, the mixture sit on there, the uh, easier it will be to roll. Well, this one isn't too bad. All right, there you have it. Homemade burrito made from leftovers. And if you want, you can add a little bit of sour cream or guacamole or some more salsa or even some more cheese on the top. And whatever you want to do with it. Really simple. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.